you don't need your customer table in every service. Now that might sound wild, but replicating something like a customer table in every service is the quickest way to create a brittle, tightly coupled system. And thanks to Kelly for pointing this out. I've seen some microservice implementations where the microservice obviously owns its own data and its own database, but gets replicated data from other microservices to facilitate reads or parent joins. Customer table is replicated to six different DBs. This gets out of hand, no? It absolutely can get out of hand, but Kelly brought up a really great point on why the data is replicated. But before we get into the why, how do we even get here? Typically you can think of maybe service A reaches out to service B's database. Nope, can't do that. Rather, we're gonna have some HTTP API or gRPC or something. We're gonna call service to service, some um, request response. Then people realize, uh-oh, that's also a bad idea in some ways because of the network issues there. Latency, big one, cascading network calls from service to service to service. I've done a bunch of videos on this and people really experience the pain. So rather what people decided to do in a lot of circumstances is just replicate data. So we have service A replicating data to service B. But is that really what they want? Probably not. But before I get to what they really want, I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event data, data platform that feeds real-time business critical data with historical context in fine-grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. No, it's not really what people want, but I am an advocate of using the tooling available. So something like data replication, use the replication available to your database. But the problem lies here is that now you're coupled to the actual schema if you're replicating that data. If uh, service A is the authority of a certain set of data and it's replicating that to service B, how do you deal with change management? You're changing the schema. Now you're breaking service B because it is expecting a particular schema. It's kind of a nightmare. So this led to people using CDC change data capture where we have service A making some type of state change to its database that's captured by change data capture CDC that's turned into an event published to some type of message broker, event log, some topic will publish subscribe, where then we can have service B asynchronously subscribe to those events and then update its local cache copy of that data. But if those CDC events really represent our internal schema, we're just as coupled as we were before. All we did is just change the mechanism to do that data replication. Now, why do we want to replicate this data to all these different services? Kelly's pointing out the reason, to facilitate reads or parent joins. And this is a big distinction. Are you doing it for query purposes? because you need to do some type of view composition, reporting purposes, or is it for command reasons where you need to have data from another service because you need to make a decision on that other data, whether the command being performed is valid. What Kelly's pointing out is that most of the time, services want this data for query purposes. So it can show the customer name along with the invoice status. It's not so much that it needs data to make a decision. So if you're using something like CDC, you may be translating that so you're not exposing directly your schema because you don't want other services directly exposed to your internal implementation details, which is what your schema is. So maybe you do have some type of translation, but you are publishing that. Service B might be picking that up, but the reality of it is it's not exactly the same shape of data from what your, ho like what your authority is to what other people care about. They may transform that into a different shape of data because most times really what they're doing is denormalizing it, doing some pre-computation on it and putting it in a format that better serves their, their purpose. So if we're publishing some type of membership upgraded event where we have the customer ID, the membership, now it's at platinum, when it's effective, maybe some other type of service, that's how it turns this into. It has some membership, knows it's platinum. That's the only thing it really cares about. It doesn't care about the name. Maybe it has some other data from some type of uh, sales uh, boundary, where it's just keeping track of the count of the number of orders and then last order. It's denormalizing this data because that's what it cares about. It doesn't care about kind of that transactional information in the same shape. It just cares about turning it into something useful for itself. So for something like queries and reporting, absolutely. If you can use something like asynchronous messaging and build it to the shape that you need, absolutely. It's eventually consistent. And there's kind of often this expectation to be given your context where you know the data is stale depending on who's actually viewing the data. It's not like something like where you're reading your own right. It's something happens over here, something else is viewing it. They don't even know it's happened. So stale data, depending on kind of SLAs and what you actually care about is totally fine in those contexts, makes a lot of sense. But there's another option, which is view, view model, UI composition. We have a lot of information going on here about this particular product. 
We have kind of the name, brand, color, etc. That might be owned by one boundary. Maybe let's call that the catalog. We have the price owned by a completely separate boundary related to sales. The reviews and ratings, that information, totally separate. Same thing with shipping information, when we can deliver this, as well as how many people have bought this within the last month. There's a lot of information going on here that needs to be composed together. So how can we do that? One example of this, I'll have a video about view model composition because it's a big to topic, is just having the client request and it could be just that front facing, that's the particular boundary that is doing all that composition. Each one of those red boxes is owned by their particular service. We don't have something where we need events flowing everywhere and have all this replicated data everywhere, even if it's a different shape. The option is just do the composition for wherever it's needed, in the UI, in reporting, et cetera. It's not one or the other. You can do a combination of view composition as well as replicating this data and changing the shape as you need. It's not one or the other. You use what kind of fits best in your context. Now on the flip side, what do you do with commands? You have to perform some type of action and you need data from another service to decide whether that action you can actually perform it. What do you do? Well, the first option is doing exactly the same thing with distributing data asynchronously via events. That's totally fine. So as long as you realize the data stale, it's eventually consistent and the decision that you make can live with that. That's okay, that's one option. Another option is make a synchronous call to the other service. So a command comes into service A, it needs to reach out to service B, make that network call, HTTP API, whatever the case may be to get that data. The reality of it is you're still getting stale data. By the time you actually get the response and try to act on it, that data could have already changed in service B. So, so as long as you know that and this is still stale data, just because you're doing re request response and not asynchronous messaging to build up a local cache, it's still stale, stale data. Could it be less stale? Sure, but there's no guarantees. Now, the option I think you should consider the most is this. I always deem a service is the authority of a set of business capabilities and the data behind those capabilities. So, if your service needs to own the decision, then it should probably own the data related to that decision. And it could be that that data is derived from other services. So we're going full circle back to the beginning about maybe using asynchronous events and then you're changing the shape of that data and that's the data that you're the authority on that you can use that to make your decision. I always love to say this, you do not need one model to rule them all. This is often called like entity services. You don't need to have one service that owns all the information about a customer. There's different parts of your system that own the information about a customer, not just one entity service called customer. So here's a too long didn't watch. No, you do not need to replicate that customer table to six different databases. What you really need is a view, a composition of that customer data built purposely for your context. Do you need query purposes? Build a production. Do you need to make a decision? Know who the authority is of that data. And again, you do not need one model to rule them all where there's gotta be a singular place that owns all the customer data. Now, of course, get in the comments and let me know your horror stories of obviously data replicated everywhere and the problems that it caused. Also the tooling, are you using CDC? Are you replicating data? What are you doing? Get in the comments. And thanks to everybody that supports my channel. I really do appreciate it. If you wanna join my channel, the link's in the description on how to join. You also get access to our private Discord server. Again, link's in the description on how to join. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to get in the comments. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.